So this is something that we actually didn't plan. I kind of I find out that we're gonna do a, a talking over the scenes kind of like a few minutes ago. But that's cool, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. There is a lot of things to share probably um, and to share. But it's it's us explaining through the scenes or people like activity sort of like extra. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And but you guys are welcome to. Raise your hand at any time. Go ahead. Raise it. So when I first watched this film, the dog was the most beautiful. Also, it was a lot harder than the very first one. How much do you realize your life experiences in speaking to art? How much do you like art? Please repeat the question when you um, okay. guys answer it as well. The whole thing? Just you know, a, a abbre abbreviated, abbreviated version. <laughs> How much control do you feel like you have over your face? Like, do you feel like that you like to shape them, or do you feel like you're in control of that? Like, this is just the result of what you want to create with your face. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna answer, and I think that through my answer, we're gonna uh, sure. understand what we're Is that on? Is this on? Yes. Oh. Um, I think that uh, my life obviously shaped uh, my art, that's undoubtedly. Um, and vice versa as well. I think that also my art shapes my my life up to a point that perhaps my life is, I mean, my art is taking over and I have almost no life. <laughs> so I guess that that's, that's the better answer I can give. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, this film in particular is very personal and um, it's very much based on personal vignettes and photographs, videos, uh, um, you know, we, we will explain you about the locations and uh, about the situations there, them, there, there as well, that they're very much all based on, you know, personal relationships as well, not like literal, but at least personal feelings, because this film is very much about feelings and sensations, which is about love. And I think that love is very ambiguous and sometimes it's even abstract. That's why it's very difficult to answer the question, what is love? So I wanted the film to be almost, um, yeah, just basically not explaining too much. You don't understand very well what is going on in the scenes, but you don't need it. It's just a matter of creating feelings and sensations on the audience. So uh, I think I answered very well, no? Or is it really cool? Thank you. Uh, um, so we start with this thing? Sure. And uh, he said the rule that if you guys want to interrupt at any time, you guys can do it. So let's just go back just a little bit. Let's just say that we opened this film in Cannes, and that was big deal. <laughs> Beautiful experience. Yeah. Um, so here it is. Also, the Queen's the Queen saying is actually a very cool selection in Cannes. I mean, let's put the logo there. Um, they treat us super, super well. And we realized when we were there that the, the films, they were extremely experimental. And we were almost like, wow, what the fuck is this? Uh, almost like maybe they consider that our film because it's not sort of like typical children family thing they might think that this is extremely extremely oh i thought that you were oh oh, oh sorry uh cool i thought that you were saying not swearing or anything like that uh, <laughs> can i swear okay it, it helps me um so so cool yeah cans was an incredible experience the whole selection was extremely um, experimental up to a point that some of the films they make us even DC, I think, right? It was like, yeah. wow. What the fuck? One of the films in particular. One of the yeah. films was crazy experimental. But anyway, it was beautiful. Cannes is probably my favorite festival. I would say Venice as well, but Cannes, the selection of Cannes is like really <laughs> incredible. So <clears throat> anyway, that's the intro. We continue. This is Valladolid, beautiful also festival in a beautiful theater, like very old classical opera theater. It was an incredible experience as well in Spain. Very old city, um, medieval stuff, you guys. 
not very used to that thing, but in Europe we have like really old buildings. Um, and these are at Pigman TV and Leo Sanchez Studio. Um, and also Pastel. Pastel. Yeah, we yeah. didn't mention Pastel. Yeah. Pastel is the studio of uh, Barry Jenkins that they are very much our godfathers. And they love the film. They, they actually love the witness back in the time and they contact me and they say, whatever you do, we're gonna be involved. And um, it was a total uh, honor basically to have them uh, godfathering us. I don't know if that makes sense. We love that word, godfathering. Too. Godfathering. <laughs> That'd have been great, yes. Yeah, Godfathering is, is good. <clears throat> okay, um, and that's the title. <clears throat> okay, so we start with this uh, location. This is actually in Madrid in a, in a restaurant that is called Casa de Vinos, which is really incredible place and is still preserved as very much as it was in the 1920s. And they serve really cool food. And it's the original place that inspired me to start this story. Actually, I went there with my ex-girlfriend, crazy uh, relation that I have for 12 years. And we went there and except for imagining her instead of the guy, that was a shot that I took. And she was here talking to me and I was talking to her, of course. And the whole thing was very intense and um, it kind of like triggers the beginning of this film. Like, let's talk about relationships here. So did you, did, was the film, you said you were in the cafe and that sort of inspired the film. You said you were in the cafe with your ex at the time yeah. while the film, it wasn't like you went back and then that triggered it? No, 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 I was there with her talking about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that whole thing triggers the film the beginning of the film was the initial idea always sort of more of a mood um, more of a mood piece like like what we see here or was it more of a traditional narrative no it was from the beginning i wanted to be very loose i just wanted to show different uh, types of relationships. I just basically wanted people to connect with different moments, uh, just because when we get in a relationship, we, and when we try to analyze our relationships, uh, we don't know much about them because everything is very organic and it grows. And all of a sudden, two years later, you're moving in with somebody. And then you're like, oh my God, how did I get here? If you try to analyze it, it's very difficult because everything grows organically. So that's what I wanted to do in this film, just create little vignettes that they don't talk too much. Obviously that you are like objective from the outside. Um, so it's basically like in a voyeuristic way, you get, you get into, into a relationship, you watch a little bit and then you leave. Um, you get a little bit less information than the couple itself but I don't think that the couple themselves, they know that much anyways. It's just that, right? We know little about what's going on. Anyway, let's continue. Um, technically, this was a challenge because this guy is taking a cigarette inside of his jacket. And that was hell to do, you remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and it's one of the shots where we started to get really graphic into silhouettes. And in his jacket, the way we were, I mean, I think this is, this, this was one of the establishing shots where we started to get that level of graphism that you were after. It with is the true. Beats, with the beat sequence. It is true. This was one of the, <clears throat> this was one of the first shots that we actually start actually working. Uh, and we have a lot of work in progress that they look really bad. Mm -hmm. And, and we have this one that looks pretty cool. But at the beginning, it was just like, you know, a character with a with a jacket that was not simulated at first, and it ended up not being simulated either. This this, this part no, is not yeah. simulated. This was, I mean, we get into the details. This one is, I mean, everything has been pretty much every shot has been sculpted uh, almost frame by frame, following Alberto's uh, drawers and designs. Um, yeah, and this guy was. We were using uh, a tool that uh, we had a friend David Corral uh, creating for us. And he, this one was one of the shots also with the beach girl 
where we started really using it. And yeah, here we getting, we were getting already into issues like shoulders and things like that that wasn't working. And here's what we could say, yeah, we are already achieving that level of graphism. And we're also getting into things like, as you say, opening the jacket and things like that, that we could do it pretty much by hand. So yeah. By hand. And we are talking about <coughs> shots that are maybe like 700 frames, mm -hmm. which is insane. So yeah. it was a lot of hand work. You had a question. For me, it feels like it's like technique and taste meeting perfectly. Do you guys feel like the technique is still has something to be developed? Or do you feel like this is it just all came together? Is there a part of the pipeline or process that you still feel like? Yeah, we didn't quite get it. Right. Yeah, we, we want to work on it. Well, I mean, I can. It was really, uh, we developed the tools that we needed to have for this particular short film. I mean, we knew that it was the requirements is a 15 minute short film. Uh, and we had a limited amount of resources. Uh, plus it's also a short film that we do it for passion on, on the side pretty much in, 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 many, in many aspects. So we developed tools to still be, you know, <clears throat> still everything had to be crafted. And, and we just, it's saying if we achieve the technique that we are gonna be using, let's say from now on, uh, it would be a, a a big thing to say, but we we achieved what we needed for the short. Uh, I don't think we we were the, the big thing that we wanted to do is there was a large amount of characters and we couldn't develop every single character to do everything. And at the same time, we wanted everything to be graphic and crafted and designed. So that's that's how and why we this, this uh, designed this these tools basically. So I think we 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 got where what we needed really so well we finished the film we finished the um, film <laughs> but we, we didn't have per se a solid pipeline as in a feature film you know a solid pipeline is a cool factory that actually you know like like a bread factory or like a cookie factory that everything works and um, and one thing is codependent to the other one that's what is a solid pipeline in <laughs> our case each shot almost have a different pipeline because we were basically working on the shot. It's a little bit of a nightmare, but in a way, think about this as a student film. We were improvising. We started seven years ago. We might didn't have a lot of experience in production. Now, obviously, we have much more experience because some other projects that we've been doing, Leo has been evolving with his studio much more. I've been creating my own studio and I've been working on different projects. So if I have to do this film again, I wouldn't do it necessarily like this because there are a lot of things that nowadays with our experience, you know, you might do better. I have to say though, that when you have big budgets, you invest on creating a character that the turnaround works from every angle. Uh, you create rigs that they don't deform, <laughs> Uh, badly, and you're, you you spend a lot of money because you are saying, okay, we're gonna see this character from, you know, maybe three hundred shots in from different many angles. But in this case, this guy, we never see his legs, we never see down his belly, uh, we never see the back. So there's no way to really care about what's going on three hundred and sixty degrees. Yeah, I mean, if I had to, on my point of view as well, I mean, I'm with Alberto, and I think maybe getting a bit more specific to your question than I did before. On my, I, I, probably if we were going to do the film again on our own budget, on our own time, a lot of the things we will have to address in the same way. Let's say the philosopher, probably we will do it exactly the same way. But just because, as Alberto say, in a feature film, you do a lot of pre-production, you do a lot of development, you do a lot of rigging, you do a lot of things. And <clears throat> a lot of the things that have to be defined at the very early stage, and then you leave them as they are, and then it goes into production. And here also we wanted to have that um, flexibility, plasticity to still be able to define and design the characters, even though, even when animation is already approved and done, you know, because we were still every every shot was happening in parallel. So uh, that was really specific and very much needed for for the the nature and the situation of this uh, of this film. Um, it's really cool. I got some I got some questions here from Zoom. Uh, I know you probably get this one a lot. Was it filmed live and then illustrated animated? 
Was the film what? Was it filmed live first? Basically rotoscoping. Was there any? No, no, no. We don't rotoscope. We cannot rotoscope or do motion capture because <laughs> otherwise we couldn't be even nominated. You guys the animation know. is beautiful. So huh? The animation is beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Animation is awesome because we have incredible animators, mm -hmm. uh, super cool professionals. <laughs> Top level animators that they work in Disney, DreamWorks, uh, Pixar. Uh, so it's just friends of us that they like the project, they like the message, and they say like, "Wow, I want to be part of this thing. Give me, give me a shot." Uh, but these guys are incredible, and the way that they work is basically like that. Like um, usually in Disney, uh, you you take reference of yourself, and then you have this little mouse or whatever acting extremely realistic uh ver they deliver sentence extremely realistic and it's insane um the the only difference is that our proportions are real so it kind of like people kind of like believe that is not rotoscopy or believe that it hasn't been shot before because it's basically realistic proportions mm -hmm. um but we shot every shot all the reference and if anytime that you see a man is myself. Anytime that you see a woman, is a woman. <laughs> it's like a bunch of friends, and you know that they wanted to be part of this thing as well. So that's that's how we that's how we do the animation. Nice. Um, someone asked, uh, "Is there anything you guys want people to think about when people when watching this? Basically, like what sort of feelings and emotions do you want to evoke to the viewers and the audience when they watch this film?" Yeah. Because um, love is a hard topic to discuss. Yeah, but, but basically what I, I didn't want to answer what is love. That's a very difficult que question to answer. It has not been answered for, for the last centuries that we've been trying to do it. It's very ambiguous. Also, love is constantly evolving with society, always behind trying to catch up. Um, and what I wanted to talk is about love today. Like what's going on with love today? What's going on with relationships nowadays? Uh, that's why there's this very important moment in the story where you see the guys on Tinder and then you cut to the old couple, uh, which very much resembles what it was relationships a few generations ago, which was very much based on commitment. While people now, including myself, we are very much focused on, you know, we are very self-centered. We are very much focused on our own careers, our own um, evolution as an individuals. And uh, we don't necessarily think too much about creating a strong family as it was back in the time. Now, my question is, do you think that love back in the time, you know, relationships, they were happier just because they were based on commitment? I don't know. It is true that my parents, they were together until the end of their lives. Uh, it is true that now I go to a wedding and the next year there is a divorce. Uh, but I don't know who is happier. I'm, I'm not too sure if our love now is better or, wo or worse than back in the time. I just wanted to talk about how love is nowadays, the shape of love and how we you know, how we communicate each other. Like when you are texting and people is not answering you, that's something for me that it kind of like very much reflects relationships nowadays. People, people break up nowadays by not answering a, a text message. That's how you get notified that, that you are done. <laughs> right. More questions. You, you wanted to have another question and, and then she goes. Okay, another question. You. How the girl that? The girl that Well, I just wanted to talk about any sort of like love. Generally, it can be joyful and it can be full of pain. Unfortunately, there is a lot of a number, a huge number of suicides that they are based on, you know, not uh, relationships that they are not working or, and usually kind of in teenagers, which is very sad. Um, we should actually check on that because especially now with social media, it's happening more and more just because you have access to your ex-life and you keep checking what they are doing. 
and it creates a lot of pain. So from the time of the romantics, suicide in love has been happening forever. You know, like the, the poets, the romantics, they were just killing themselves if they were not actually um, getting uh, mutual love from the other person. And I think it's part of love generally. Suicide, unfortunately, and drama is part of love. It's almost like, I would say that love is joyful, but there is a lot of drama and pain on a relationship most of the time, I would say. Uh, if you think about your relationships, how much was amazing and how much was a nightmare? I don't know. I don't know how to answer. <laughs> I see a lot of, I see a lot of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, ma like it, it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. You are living with somebody and, and it's not easy to live with people and it's not easy to get rejected. It's not easy to, you yeah. know. So, so it's, it's not so much that this part of love is just that love involves a lot of consequences. I would say that that's how I would say that suicide, the suicide scene is, in, is here. Some questions back there, I think. Yes. Good. Uh, when I say love is a secret society, if it's something that I discover <laughs> or if it's something that I felt before doing the film. Yeah. I thought it was a super cool line, and then <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy, it's nice, <laughs> for a teaser, for anything, right? Um, so I thought it was nice to basically conclude the film with it. And same as I say that in this scene, I was with my ex uh, having lunch, and that triggered the film. Almost immediately, I got the, the ending with that sentence, uh, because when you are not in love, you want to be in love. You wanna figure out how to get in love. You're asking your friends, can you introduce me with some? Go out, like, and we have a double date with somebody. You know, it's like, you're trying to get in. Um, and when you get inside, you don't know how you get there, but you are part of the society and you don't know how to bring people anyways. You don't know how to invite people. So I think it's very accurate. Uh, love is a secret society and I like it as an ending. It's not an answer. It's actually more ambiguous in fact, but. But it's cool. Like, Venga, he was trying. And then you're next. This, not this, but later in the film, there's voiceover that talks about, like, you want to, uh, I don't know the exact one, but talks about kids. Yeah. Children. You talked a bit about it throughout the show. You want to have kids? You want to have kids? <laughs> <laughs> This is an Thank awesome you. question. This is the best panel question I've ever heard. <laughs> Me too. I want to run away right now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, it's, it's actually a cool question. Uh, the reason why I put it there is because, okay, that whole... For, sorry, whole for people on Zoom, that was, does Alberto want to have kids? <laughs> <laughs> um... Do you, uh, just to answer quickly, I do not want to have kids. Uh, or at least that's something that I am pretty certain right now. I don't have a space for that sort of commitment right now. Uh, my creating films is taking over everything. I already surrender and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go with this. I like to make films. I'm in a good position now. People want me to do feature films. I don't even know what is gonna to happen to me if I get a feature film because just to do this or to do the witness or to do the last short that I did, it took me like maybe 19, 20 hours a day. So basically I sleep four hours and then go back again and work. So if I get into something longer, it's gonna be incredibly difficult. Getting into relationships also is almost really very difficult. There's not many people that they can actually stay with you when you are not paying them enough attention and you are just basically focused on your art. So it's funny that I am doing a film about love when I am a total disaster uh, in terms of <laughs> Shall we pass this question to Leo? <laughs> oh, well, I was trying to avoid it because my girlfriend is here. We never talk about it before. 
<laughs> so if it's okay. No, you... <laughs> you've got no answer, but you might have this conversation. No, we actually did. I always had the same thought about it's not, I, I don't have that drive that it has to happen in my life, but if it's in the right time with the right person, you know, that might be, you know, it will be more than welcome. Yeah. But it's not like I have that drive and that thing on me. Next question. Cool. <laughs> it's nice. It was her. Yes. I can answer that. <laughs> you want to answer? You guys had no budget, right? Yeah, we had no budget. And we were just basically, let's go with the flow. And this was the flow. We have to say that obviously, Leo and myself, we were co financing equally whatever expense we needed to take care of. Uh, which was very, um, you know, it was a sacrifice from both of us, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but we also have a lot of very good friends that they just believe in the project and they want to be part of it. So if we need to actually say from scratch, let's figure how much this can cost, I pro we probably wouldn't do it. Like it's like we cannot afford this film. No, I, mean, I cannot afford this film. No, I mean, we know how much it costs to do animation. You've done short films uh, for yeah. the Love and Robots. I mean, you know better than anyone how much it costs. I think this started as, at least on my end, is the kind of thing that you just jump on it, uh, not thinking truly too much. You know, I really wanted to work with Alberto. I saw the animatic. I just was really, really into it. But you never, I mean, you kind of know how long it takes things, you know how expensive it is, more than the how much money costs us, plus the help that we got, and plus it's also the amount of time that Alberto and myself, we have invested on. Hmm. And, and we are and, not cheap. And we're not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's, uh, so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's heavy stuff, but uh, yeah, to repeat it would be something else. So you, you wanted to add? Uh, we had people full time, both in Alberto's studio and my studio occasionally. And we have a lot of people that also were working part time as the people that Alberto was saying before, animators in particular. Uh, yeah. And then in Alberto and myself, we had periods of time when we were working also full time on it as well. So it, it's been a, it's been a bit of a hybrid. So it's, so it's that kind of, I would say is that, as Alberto say, a student film slash professional, you know, it's a, it's a bit of both worlds. It's a quite a peculiar situation because even about the seven years that uh, took seven years, I mean, it sounds like grants, you know, it's, it's big, but, it is, but the reality is that we had to stop, completely stop the project along the way in few occasions that Alberto had to go on his projects, I had to go on mine, um, so yeah. That's, um, that's it. It's a it's a student project with our students, basically. That's a good uh, that's a good line also. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a very good question. I was telling you something similar. Digital artists now, because of the NFT industry and kind of like uh, is drastically changing. Uh, we are a bunch of nerds. I am a big ass nerd. Uh, and now we are like highly considered. Like our art now makes more sense. Back in the time, except for in the industry that we always have consideration, uh, Leo, for example, here was one of the first persons that I can actually think that could take work out of Disney or Pixar and, and work from home. That was almost kind of like impossible, like 10 years ago. Out of the biggest studios, yeah. Out of the biggest studios. So we were highly considered inside of the industry, but in the art world, however, I've been a painting for a long time and I always wanted to um, sell my oil paintings. And I remember some galleries, when I showed them my uh, CV, they were checking, Emmy Wiener, you work on Disney, you work for Cartoon Blue, I mean, I mean Cartoon 
network, etc., uh, etc. Et you need to take this out of your resume. This is not helpful. This is not cool. We don't consider this art. That's not happening anymore. Like galleries, we realize that art galleries, except for nucleus, for example, that they actually respect um, people that they know how to really do art. <laughs> yeah. Um, the most of the times it's for a small one percent of the population that they pay tons of money for many times rubbish uh so that's what i like about what's going on now with nft that they are like kind of like putting us up front and you know admiring the digital art which is something that it was very difficult to expose as well you know it's almost like how what is the right place to show your art in a digital art, like on a screen, like a nice screen or like a phone or where, because where is the file living? And now that is changing and it's a really cool time for, for us digital artists. Do, always unbearable. Do we talk about that relationship along the project? <laughs> yeah, you, I okay. guess you can also talk about how easily uh, your guys' working relationship was. Yeah. yeah, let's let's be. I mean, let's be real. When you work in a project, it's never, unfortunately, much fun. There is always like a lot of problems, and especially three D is extremely frustrating because many times there's a lot of things that they fail, they don't work uh, and it's a lot of work and effort. Thanks God we like what we do but um, it is very energy, how you call it, consuming um, and when you see it final, you don't even appreciate it for the next month. You are just looking at it and you're like I'm fucking exhausted. So I wouldn't say it's a cool, like, oh, cool, we're making a film. That's nice. Hello, good morning. Like, it's, I mean, it's I, not. for me personally, even with myself, doing art is a roller coaster. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but the beginning is great. It goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. Experience puts you in a place that makes you aware of it and you can deal with it better in a better way. Uh, that's my experience. Working in a partnership with Alberto, uh, in this case with Alberto, as it, it, as it is, um, it's it's also like a let's say like a business. It's always it has to be a certain amount of conflicting things. To I feel it's almost like that energy that kind of happens together, you know. So I think it's inevitable. Uh, but I think as any other creative process, you need you, you get this this these situations. And then as Alberto said, put it very well. Uh, after you finish, you need some time to get some distance. But isn't that the same for all of us when we create things? I mean, that's, I think that's the, probably the most natural creative uh, thing that happens, right? I mean, that's, mm. that's my experience. Uh, I'm curious how, uh, how you guys are working with the uh, so you mean if the five, if if I chose this style to create the this film? Yeah, like like do you feel like uh, the graphics of it helps help Oh, I see. It's something that I answer many times because they ask me like, why did you choose this style? I'm like, the, the style chose me somehow. Is this is like. Um, even when I was working in Spider-Verse, when I was working in The Witness, all the films, they were eating from each other and they were very much influencing each other uh, because it was a seven years where all these things happened. And my style is just a, a result of myself not knowing what the fuck I was doing because I am a self-taught and every time I have to solve problems and, you know, and I'm facing new things and I'm like, oh my God, how is this? happening. So I remember when I started doing comic books for the first time, I was very young. And the reason why I evolved and I become a good painter is because I was telling stories. And then in the 
for the first time in my life, maybe I have to draw a car. And then in the next panel, the, the car is going away. And so I, need, so I need to draw a car going away. So just because I was doing comic books, I was learning to draw and I was learning a lot. I was never training. I was just training by accident, which is something cool. You know, there's a lot of people that they are like, okay, this week I'm gonna draw hands or I'm gonna draw cars or heads. I never did that. I've been always on some sort of like a story. And that evolves and after the years, it becomes this. Like I'm basically what you see this is like, okay, I'm painting a car for the first time. So I am painting a guy in a cafe for almost the first time. So it's, it's a, the style kind of happened after the years. Super long answer, sorry. How? How do I manage to do that? How do you manage burnout? Like, how do you prevent burnout? Oh, burnout. How I prevent burnout? How I prevent burnout? I don't. <laughs> I just burn the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, I think that that's, that's, that's the right answer. I mean, I'm, I'm, but it, just because you just need to deliver, you're just focused and doing the thing. But I, I have a level of anger sometimes. Like I remember when I was at Disney, sometimes my pencil was falling out of the table and I was like, you fucking cunt. And we were like swearing and everybody was like, oh my. So I have like a level of anger constantly <laughs> that is probably as a result that I'm really burned so, out. So the anger, would you say the anger keeps you going? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's because I love it. It's my passion. Yeah, there is nothing I can love more in this world than animation, or at least the animation that I actually want to do. Animation nowadays, you know, is fairly commercial and mainstream. We kind of like change it drastically. We love the sun robots and we boom, push it hard. And then all of a sudden now we have networks that they want to do something else. That's what it really keeps me out of burning out because I love it and I want to show the people and the audience, what I can do with animation. That's something that there was. Yeah, for me, there is one thing that happens to me is there is levels of burnout. There is, you're getting closer to the heater, you get starting to get toasted, <laughs> burn out. Uh, I did once get burnt out, and it's an area that I don't want to get there anymore. I sometimes get close to it, and that's when I'm really, when I get close enough to it is when I pull back because I think it's a very dangerous place. I think we all, most of us it happens that we are around there. Anger, and again, the analogy of getting toasted in a way, if that makes any sense. I think that's okay, you know, at least for me. I, I manage it and I work with it, but I'm always extremely careful because when you hit that is when your health and also when you stop, at least it happened to me many, many years ago, you stop at some point even you don't even enjoy what you do you know that to me that's a big danger yeah that's my take on it i have a zoom question actually sorry uh quick one why is it called the windshield wiper okay the windshield <laughs> wiper um this actually a pretty cool title but sounds horrible uh because especially when you say uh animation short film the windshield wiper you might think it's adventures of a Fucking windshield wiper or something <laughs> like that. Uh, basically, um, when you look at the windshield when it's raining and you see the amount of drops that they are falling and then you wipe it, another sort of shape of different drops appear. So each relationship is completely different. Um, we, we tend to call everything love. Those are just four words. Um, the amount of, I mean, the different relationships that I would say, none of them is similar. And I could, some of them, I could call them love. The other one could be called fluff. The other one could be called flip. Uh, but we keep labeling as love. So the windshield wiper refers to this pattern that basically represents each relationship. So you wipe and another relationship, you wipe and another relationship. Also the rhythm of the film, it's very much like a windshield wiper as well. It's like wiping and showing you, wiping and showing you. And Virginia Woolf did a, a novel called The Waves that was also told in that rhythm, which was very experimental. 
And um, it's not a homage to Virginia Woolf, but also kind of like telling you that somebody did something similar in the past. <laughs> that's, it. that's the title. Vaughn, you wanted to say something? When you, when you did the whole phrase, like, or, 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 oh, in seven years, I mean, when I was doing the storyboards, when I was doing the storyboards, I was definitely out. I've been out for a while. So <laughs> <laughs> seven years ago is not that long ago, right? Mm, probably it would be different, 100%. This is very much a little bit of a cynic view and this, the view of the outsider, I suppose, a person that is not inside of the society. So yeah, definitely it would be different if I would be falling in love. No, this is very much the experience that I had over the last few years um, where I was kind of like experience, experiencing life by myself, focusing on work, having some flints here and there, but, but that's it. I hope nobody's listening now. Um, yes. When did we know that it was done? Yeah. Okay. All right. This is done. OK. Was it already reflected in the animatic from beginning to end? It was what? Was it reflected in the animatic yeah. from? from the animatic was very much what you see here, like exactly the same. Um, I, that's what I usually, that's where I do most of the direction um, in the storyboards. That's where I do the camera moves. And the animatic for this one is fairly simple, but the animatics that I'm doing now, they are like extremely complex, like camera moves, and I get very, very deep into details. Why? Because Animatics are good for obviously us to plan how much we're going to animate. We cannot have any extra frames uh, because you don't edit in animation. You don't edit like with extra footage. You basically just animate what the animatic is telling you. That's the best way to control your budget as well. Uh, but usually you do very, very sophisticated anim animatics because I need to show the product to the executives or to people that is investing, not in this case, but usually I do it very sophisticated because I want to, I want them to have very clear of what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So they understand it. If I don't have to show the animatic, I mean, if I don't have to show anything to any investor, I don't know what it will be the level of detail that I will do. It will be just enough for, for us to work, but not like super detail. Yeah, I mean, because it feels very organic, that's why I think along with what you're saying is like, how did you know, okay, this is this is where oh, the yeah, film, we did an answer. This, this is the last shot, or this is how the film is gonna end. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even with an animatic, like did it change? Like as you're doing, okay, this scene, now we're gonna render this scene, and now we're gonna, you know, did it change throughout the course of the film? Was it always true to the animatic? It was always super true mm -hmm. to the animatic. We had one last shot, one very last shot, uh, just before Gans, and we just fit it there, which was this uh, shot, this one. Uh, it was like something that I thought was very interesting, like to start the film with something that is very graphic and it shows very much what love might be. Um, from my point of view, of course, you guys know already a little bit of my life. So this is love. <laughs> and, and I thought it would be very cool to, to start with it. This shot, we didn't have it in the animatic. And also this shot is the only painting that I actually didn't do myself. This, this was um, two guys that I worked with them for a long time in different projects, which is uh, George Barodi and, um, and Bani Avangarov, that they are like Russians, incredible, incredible artists. Uh, I'm part of my team and uh, pff, like, uh, it, they, they did a beautiful painting here and we were doing a lot of post-production and you know, Things like that. But this is the only shot that was not in animatic. Yeah. When you're making this or 
Oh, the animatic? Oh, because, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. When do I decide that the animatic is finished and, okay, let's start working on this. Yeah. Uh, when it works, when it, when it says what you have to say, um, I don't, uh, I show it to people, I show it to Leo and he's like, okay, I like it, let's do it. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I, I show it to people, but not to too many people. Like I have to say that I never share too much of my work. Uh, I, I don't know, I just like to show things when I consider that they are final. I trust obviously what people have to say, but um, I trust myself uh, quite a lot. So it's almost like sometimes people, they, you know, like everything is subjective and they can take you that, into a completely different direction. Sometimes so opinions, they can be harming as well. And you need to protect yourself and your work and your time when you ask opinions. So yeah, I prefer to, I have very few people that I show things. Yeah, this is one of the luxuries we had or the only thing that made it possible to make the short film this way is to have uh, an animatic that it's so clear, so locked down already. I mean, Alberto likes to have everything, at least in my experience on this project, to have everything alive, design, cameras, uh, mostly until the very end. But from us, uh, in order to plan, as I was saying before, the amount of uh, footage and the amount of characters that we had uh for a short film having an animatic that is so locked down and we can say well the philosopher we're going to see him from this angle from this other angle. we're not going to see the shoes we're going to see and how that was critical for us to be able to to make it happen and to plan i mean versus a lot of the feature film uh, processes that in the biggest studios it happens that we jump in production and sometimes they're still writing the story at some point you know so i think that to me was critical uh, to get the animatic so, you know, so locked. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say that um, when you release the film, and it's finished, uh, there is like a time in which you keep it very secret because you need to go to festivals and things like that. That part is not as exciting, you know? Uh, even when it went to Cannes, it was incredible, but we couldn't really massively share it. Uh, I think that one of the most interesting parts, at least for me, was when we were announcing that the film is for free online. And then all of a sudden, a lot of people watched it. And people that they follow their work for a long time, they start commenting, saying what they say. Bad, bad feedback, good feedback. But we start seeing the numbers and I'm like, wow, a lot of people is watching this. That, that's, that's almost even better than any amazing positive feedback is all of a sudden seeing that more than, you know, 20 or 30 or 40, or in this case, it were like 100 and something thousand people watched the film. It, that was like super, super motivating, I would say. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, even about uh, not putting it through festivals, not to mention the, the nomination that we got. I mean, that's a whole experience. To me, the biggest thing it's been like the reaction that we've been getting through on the audience. But as an anecdote, something that happens is this is we started in 2015 that was just prior uh even alberto starting on spider verse and all these things that happened right after that and i remember that talking with alberto at some point through production i, I actually say to him because you're so close to it or i was i mean we were close to it he's like is this still holding up you know like four years later you know that's 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 something that happens and and you know we just kept going yeah yeah it does it does and now seeing the reactions you know that's uh, it's been it's been pretty amazing and every step of the process this is the first time that i i, I produce a short film every step step of the process is a whole a whole new um, experience as, as i say even being here today or talking you know it's it's yeah it's pretty great one what's your name by the way I think we're going to ask you to come to every q a with us <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes. 
you mean you mean like continuing this property yeah like just cover your well the thing is that and um, i would say that every time that you, that you do a project and based on my experience the team changes a lot uh just because you might not count with the same people because people get busy i'm personally my studio uh pigman tv exists when there is a project and when there is not a project i need to sell the computers and whatever and then just figure what is going to be next i cannot really keep people on board it's not like a big corporation plus also i don't want to do any commercial that comes just in order to keep the studio alive i really want to really focus what i want to do in this case are feature films and then um, i was telling you before like i have now really cool offers from big labels you know like nike or coca-cola and it's like fuck how can i say this to this no well because if i say yes that means that i'm going to spend seven eight months doing something or six months and then i'm going to be focused on a feature film for example so i don't know for example bond that is there he's been working with us for a long time in many many projects and it's and and, and he's a and he's a, an incredible. I mean, you guys know him because I mentioned him many times, and because he does amazing work, which is heavy poly, which we have him here, which is amazing honor. And, <laughs> yeah, and, but that's the same thing, you know. Like sometimes you call your your guys, and you're like, I have another project, and they're like, Fuck, I'm working on Spider-Man 29. Like I don't think I can work on it. So that's, that's the thing. If, if we can have all the team with you always, it will be amazing. But um, unfortunately, everybody needs to take care of their own lives and bills and things like that. So the, the what? What is hate? <laughs> well, that's a very cool, that's a very cool title. <laughs> but I would say I think that hate and love, they are very much by the hand. Um, what is the opposite? of love Apathy. which one Apathy. Yeah. yeah okay yeah exactly exactly <laughs> i would say indifference uh but it's not hate people a lot of people they think that is hate but it's not actually the opposite of hate is also indifference which is funny uh, so what yeah. is hate that's a good one and i don't know if it's i forgot the exact question but about doing this next, I mean, repeating the experience or not. I mean, that's, I, I can speak for myself. Under these circumstances, it's going to be very hard. I mean, doing something that it's uh, self finance, just passion across a project like that, it's quite draining, you know? And it's, uh, I think at least on, for my, on my side, it's going to take a while. Or probably if I put this kind of energy, it's going to be um, maybe developing something, uh, something else, you know? But it's, it's definitely, it takes a lot of you. Like yeah, I mean, to, to add a little bit of what you are saying as well, keep in mind, guys, that commercial animation makes total sense because this is, it takes a lot of time and it's super expensive. And unless you have people that are friends that they want to work in a short and they want to be part of it, uh, most of the time doing something like that is basically a suicide. Like nobody's going to pay much for this. The audience is small. People prefer to watch a superhero or like a crazy fantasy stuff. Uh, I understand Love, Death and Robots is very successful with, because it's in the video gamey kind of action, sort of like uh, brainy uh, things. But the windshield wiper, it is very arty. It is very not for everybody. It's very much like a French sort of like nouvelle bag in any case which the audience is, again, very small. It's my favorite kind of films, but um, to do something like that, an investor that wants to give you 50 million to do a feature film that is that minimal and, and, and that uh, independent, that's gonna be very difficult to find. So I wish, it's my, it's my biggest desire to do a feature film that is Sort of like that, but why not having a little bit of fantasy there or having like a love story mixed with fantasy? 
but the, we don't need a small rabbit there, but uh, we can have, you know, many, many other things in terms of like non-commercial animation, but it needs to have a little bit of like a juicy, fuck, let's get our money back at least, right? Mm. Shall we continue commenting the film? Oh, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've evolved into this. We are this. done commenting yes. the film. <laughs> it's just fine. Just stop sharing. Okay. This is a homeless. Okay, let's do. Mm, I was following the I always follow the advice of several of my friends here in Hollywood that they always say have a lot of different things going on at the same time because you don't know which one is gonna kick first. <clears throat> That's what I follow. I have, but I naturally I have tons of ideas and stories that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Some of them they are so old that they don't work anymore. It's just like why I'm gonna do this? Like I I evolve. Uh, some of them they are like very new, and I know so little about them that they are like very difficult to develop as well. Uh, but yeah, I do have a lot. Um, the thing is that it takes so long to do animation that if I can make three more in a lifetime, that will be a super success uh, in terms of feature because we are talking about things that they take maybe five years, um, and I'm forty, uh, so. Forty three, actually. <laughs> I'm forty three. Forty two. Forty two. I'm gonna be forty three soon. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's 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 the the goal to have several things at the same time. How do you know that story? How do I know? How did you? Yeah, why the windshield wiper? Out of all your different ideas, why yeah. the windshield wiper? Um, because back in the time, seven years ago, we didn't have Love, Death, and Robots yet. And ad adult animation was definitely not in the radar. And I wanted to do something that was drastically different. I could have go gory and super violent, or I could go something that it resonates a little bit more with myself. So basically, this was like a big um card or like a big call for the industry saying like we can do something else guys like let's let's try let's use the let's honor the art of animation so we can do things that are not necessarily about a hero and the hero journey and you know i'm i i say many times but i'm more interested in uh super losers than in superheroes because you know, our next door neighbor, or even ourselves uh, with our own problems, I think that they are more interesting on film than the person that is going to save the world. You kind of like it's, you see it too often, right? I think the world has been saved so many times, but this little kid or mouse or whatever. Has everybody here seen Love, Death, and Robots? Okay. Just, yeah, just making sure. <laughs> Martin's coming there, by the way. So that's There's nice. a little question on Zoom. What was the most difficult production or like design decision that you guys had to make? What were some difficult choices? On this project, the most difficult decision, I would say that the most difficult scene for sure was actually this one, I would say. I don't know, Leo, what do you think? Probably the, the guy smoking, but also perhaps, let's go, this this one standing up, let's just play it. This was a pain in the, a pain in the ass, never, never. Anything that, had, anything that had to be, you know, like anatomy, we all know like in, in CG to get a rig that you can have anatomy showing and it's articulating, going from a sitting down position, standing up, even the sex scene as well. I mean, this is all oh, yeah, the something scene. that we had to, Alberto and myself going back and forth, kind of tweaking and, and changing. And that was one of post. Them. Yeah, that was that was really post difficult as well. Um, yeah, I think I mean a lot of them they had for different circumstances they had their own challenges. I think I mean, um, like as you said, the philosopher. As we were doing it by hand, that was one of the tricky things. And then um, homeless with the 
with the, the yeah. design designing the beer, but also the clothing that, that yeah, yeah that homeless guy was very convincing yeah <laughs> that was that was, the, was very uh, well animated that was yeah. Diego Conte and Olads, which uh, there were two amazing artists that worked previously also with uh, Alberto in, in another show in another show and they just did an incredible uh you know pass on the clock simulation which it was you know that was that was that added but that's probably the, the one that looks like a, one of the most expensive shots in the in the short film in my in my opinion but uh, other than that i mean what it was the uh, you know they all had kind of each shot it was so different to treat like even you know even shading was almost discovered there like each render pass is different per scene yeah. like we've been having in you know <sighs> Uh, I don't know, some scenes they have like 10 different layers of render, some others they have only three. Um, so it's, it's not like a consistent pipeline. We were just, okay, this is not gonna look cool here, let's try differently. Uh, but in a way, the, the technique usually is simple. Uh, it's very much what Bambi or we were doing always in Disney, right? It's like a cool painting that it works well in terms of physics of light. And then a 3D character that works within the painting with the same physics of light. So that's how you make things working. And that's what Disney was doing for us. So we basically follow what yeah, the yeah. master was doing. And, and in terms of process adding to that, to give credit to the artist as well, the 2D, I mean, figuring out the 2D shading versus 3D that Alberto will come, we had. Um, Jonathan Catalan, he helped out a lot on defining that with also Raul Colomer and doing working with Alberto on, on rendering and preparing all the shots. And then we had, in terms of light, there, there was a, a quite a lot of back and forth in the textures, uh, the line work. I think the line work was something that we looked into and in how we had to um, separate what is the lines on the texture, what is the lines and the floating lines that we added actually on, on 3D in the rig. What is going to be the lines that Alberto will do later into the animate as a two D pure what, animation? So that was that was important too, actually. Was any part of it two D animated, or any? Were there any? Was there two D animation in any of the scenes? There is a lot of two D animation. This shot is fully two D, for example. Uh, this one. This is all two D. Let's see. This one. That's 2D, yeah, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, it's a flapping dig and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was 2D. It's just, uh, it was just, I've been a 2D animator for a long time. So I was basically uh, breaking the body on PCs and then animating the torso and the legs separately. <laughs> and then And then kind of like the light doesn't move that much. It's not like something that rotates. Uh, so that was that was 2D. So it, it was cool that we were mixing both 2D and 3D, and people really don't notice that much. Um, so and also a lot of kind of like lines on top, mm -hmm. and um, there is not really 3D environments, by the way. This is this is all 2D as well. It's after. I mean, it's not 2D. Technically, it's 3D, but it's there is no like it's 3D all, renders. Right. Yeah. It's all painted, no painted on stuff. Yeah, there is no 3D, it's just basically a painting displayed on cards uh, with a camera. And this is something that I really like to do because it's usually very effective. On The Witness, we did it a lot. And with Vaughn, we were even doing it with uh, Blender where we didn't even have uh, lighting. Everything was painted and we were basically breaking it in pieces. And the final result was actually pretty very successful. As long as you don't break the camera too much, all of a sudden you start doing crazy things and you see the trick, you know. More questions, you go next. Yeah, always. I always shoot first a reference, same as if you do plain air, you go there and then, I mean, I rarely do things from imagination. I do things from imagination when I'm talking in the phone and I'm just doodling this kind of like weird, the most weird things. You doodle very weird when you're in the phone. Um, but most of the time I like to, you know, take real reference from people, from my paintings, for oils. Uh, or for oils, I also do 
like live sessions with the with the people as well. But it's in order to understand the physics of lights, you need to see the physics of lights acting in front of you. Otherwise, it's very difficult to actually create realism. And you were next, yes. So, Good question. Um, the, I show my work to friends that I trust, that they might like the same kind of things that I like, which maybe is not something that I should trust that much because <laughs> some of I show in the film to myself. Um, but uh, yeah, usually it's, it's people that I trust cre in a creative sort of way. I never show things to people that I don't know at all. Um, I don't know, I just, I just have enough experience receiving feedback in other projects that I did that I kind of know when something is successful or not in terms of visuals. In terms of stories, another thing. You never know. You might be the most incredible director ever, and then all of a sudden you do a flop and people don't like it. That's a little bit of an unknown territory. Well, it might take, uh, I mean, this can take like a day or maybe two days, split it in two. Keep in mind that my days are like 19 hours. <laughs> <laughs> But depends, you know, like it's once I am in the rhythm of doing painting, I'm usually very fast. But if I spend like maybe six months in which I am writing or doing storyboards, doing the first painting might take a whole week just because I need to speed up again, you know, and things like that. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Most emotional connection? Mm, that's a good question, but I don't know how to answer really. Um, I'm not very emotionally connected with the painting itself, maybe with the scene, perhaps. I would say that mm, perhaps the scene that is more difficult for me to watch is the one in the, in the beach smoking, because it, rem it reminds me to when I, when we actually kind of depart my ex-girlfriend and myself, we both decide that this was not working both at the same time. So we were both kind of like looking at the horizon. There's no like, kind of like connection. Every time that I see that scene, I remember her and, uh, and I remember that moment. And breaking up is, is always very painful, right? It creates you a lot of insecurity and raises a lot of questions like, am I doing the right thing? And especially when you both decide that you don't want to continue, uh, which is very much what you see there. And then the camera takes over and goes with her, which is something that I'm always kind of like curious about, you know, it's like how did she actually manage? How did she actually do? Seems that she sees the horizon and she sees some hope and then she's going to continue. So yeah, that, that scene kind of like I see her and I feel myself kind of like, behind. Not that I am abandoned, it's just that I am more curious about what she did than what I did myself. Hmm. Were there any deleted scenes? Did you delete? Did huh? you, were there any deleted scenes? Did yes. you take anything out? Yeah, it was a deleted scene of, of uh, two friends that they're like checking Tinder and commenting. Uh, but it was, I, I thought it was a little bit redundant because we already had it. It was a little bit more um, it was a little bit more obvious that it was rejecting with no mercy, criticizing the photographs. Like, oh my God, this woman, she looks like, I don't remember, you know, but it was a little bit too um, in the face. It is already, you know, interesting and metaphorical that they are both in a supermarket and it feels that when you're swapping in internet, you're buying people sort of like in a supermarket. So. I thought it was clear enough and it was redundant the other scene. It's a shame because it was animated. Yeah, I was going to say that before I said that it was kind of uh, ideal in a way that the animatic was locked down and we could plan accordingly. But 
everything was built, the characters animated, yeah, no. corrected. But, Sorry. But it was the only one. <laughs> I know it was. Back in, I, I think it was. It was, yeah. it was cool. It's a, it was a cool scene. There were two cyclists. Behind yeah. the, we'll put it one day behind the scenes. So. Yeah, yeah, we must. We must. You know, it's not finished. Plus, it's really at least I know one of them. Is it was really a one of your friends that I know as well. So it was Salomon. Salomon to have yeah. him built and everything. It was, it was pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, a few more questions. <laughs> Let me ask narrow to what? Oh, to romantic relations. Yeah, because love is much more, much more wider than that. We can actually start talking about war or whatever. Um, I guess that maybe this short could be love, what are relationships or what are relationships nowadays and it would be way more accurate, but it doesn't sound as good. And I think that love is being used very much to define relationships or at least love is obviously one of the most important ingredient in a relationship. Um, so, so yeah, basically what I want to talk is about relationships and narrow it to that. That answer my question. But I did a bad job. Oh, now nothing. How much was <laughs> catharsis for therapy? I'm I'm still kind of stuck on all this jumbo. Um, so no, 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 it's, 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 actually, it's actually worse. I'm, I'm a person that I usually get deep into my problems um, and I don't solve them. Like I remember after a long relationship, I decide to, instead of being around my friends, I'm like, I'm gonna go into the mountains. And I was for two years surrounded by nothing. And I end up having a scar the same way that I will have a scar if I am with my friends. It doesn't matter, you know, like scars are beautiful, but I choose to confront my problems that way. And I don't find a solution or necessarily have any sort of catharsis. I don't, I don't learn much. Yeah, have a What is the anticipation of the scene of the satellite? Oh, scene of the satellite is very much people texting each other. Nowadays, it's very crazy that um, before you were usually calling the people or approaching a person in the street. Nowadays, everything is in the phone. And it's so insane how a text goes up there and then comes back. And then I was thinking that when you don't receive an answer, you are actually up there and very much by yourself, you know, alone and miserable. And that's very much the interpretation of when people don't answer you, how do you feel? You are just like above the planet Earth, outside of the planet Earth. And, and that's, that's so bad. That's the, the main interpretation. All right, last question. Last question. You open and close. Cool. You want to answer first? Um, well, you go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> an animation for me is the most beautiful of the arts. Um, I'm a painter, but I don't think I love painting as much as I love film, for example. Film is my favorite, but animation happened to have every single art that you can imagine. Like it's painting, music, storytelling, writing, um, acting, uh, sculpturing, 
uh, what else? Uh, the animation itself, like, you know, moving a character is an art as well. No rotoscoping, no uh, motion capture. That can be also an art, I don't know. But um, the thing is that it is so pure and so beautiful that I decide to give my life for it. And what I really see and what I really would like is the where we bring other type of stories that they are not, as I say before, necessarily um, commercial or mainstream, that we actually risk a little bit more and we go for you know, incredible films that they are perhaps about losers instead of superheroes. So that's how I see animation. I also feel that the audience now is the nerds that we grow up with these kind of things. Um, and I think that the audience now is accepting it because we grow up with comic books, we grow up with video games. And I think it's, there is a space for, for animation nowadays, as perhaps back in the time, it was not a space because the audience was not perhaps ready. Uh, so that's how I that's how I see animation, and and I want to give my my life for that. A lot of people is asking me, "You want to do live action?" And I'm like, "I don't know how to do that." You know, it's, it's not my thing. Yeah, for me, is animation film is the result of I kind of started on this thing because of the craft because I just love doing. A, in my case, it was creating characters and, and, you know, everything around them. So it's almost the, the craft. And then that led into, obviously, I love animation from an early age. Uh, and that kind of took me into feature film. And then you get to just, you know, you dive into it all the way through. So for me, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's, no matter what, no matter if I do a uh, uh, talking animals or or um, more realistic characters and stylized. I mean, I enjoy the craft. And that's what we do. Now, what I like to see in the animation, though, it's I still watch animation, but I watch a lot less animation than I used to. And I'm more driven to, since very a very, very long time, just stories that kind of touch me. And that tends to happen more in live action. So I would love to see, and that's really to me one of the reasons why I jump on this project. I mean, I've known Alberto for a lot, very long time. And, and I thought that's a project that is typically not gonna happen commercially. And I wanted to see that happening. Plus my own interest, which was also, I want to be, you know, create, make that translation of his art and to be help that and to, you know, bring it into, into the screen and with the challenges of this 3D. But um, yeah, I like to see personally, I like to just as a result, as an indirect or as an observation of myself, I don't watch that much animation these days or as I used to. With, I will watch anything. I will eat anything that has been animated. I watch more live action, something that touched me more. I like to see more of that in animation, mm -hmm. in the animation form. If I can be part of this, as I am hoping, great. If I am less, still great because I still love the craft itself. And um, yeah, that's, you know. Ooh. All right. Is on that note, I think that's it. Quick, can I say something? Quick? Sure, can please go ahead. The film is nominated. We are in this crazy race very much, which is like a sort of like competing. It is. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, and it's, it's basically, we just basically want the support. So if you like the film, Share it. That I'm saying this, but yeah, either share it because it's free online, which is cool. Talk about it and um, and uh, yeah, mention that deep to people like vote for eat or die. <laughs> <laughs> Let's help these guys get an Oscar. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.